Hey guys, how's it going? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. And once again, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, then I welcome you as well and I hope you enjoy the content. Now, where have I heard that from before? If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then I welcome you and I hope you enjoy the content. So as some of you guys might know, this is the three Pete, the third time around, the third installment of where you guys are gonna be getting more news information as well as my personal impressions on the next upcoming release of the official Ruby manga anthology. And before we get into that, the reception of the Red Leg Roses as well as the Mirror Mirror anthologies that I did on my channel a couple of months back have been incredible. Personally, I'm really happy and flattered to know that a lot of you guys have come to know and expect these type of videos when it comes to my impressions of the anthology so far since I started doing them back in May. And like I've mentioned in the past, it's ultimately due to that support, the fact that you guys come back to these videos, you watch them, you support the channel, you support the content, and without that, I wouldn't even be able to do these in the first place. So seriously, thank you guys very much for enjoying these videos, for hearing my thoughts, my impressions, my opinions, and for believing in the fact that I'm here to kind of share and spread this to as many people as possible. So once again, thank you. And again, it is because of your continued support that Viz has once again decided for the third time in a row to partner with me to help deliver to you guys the goods on the third official Ruby Manga Anthology featuring the Ninja Cat Faunus herself, Blake Belladonna. So just as a reminder, if you are looking to catch up on the anthology series thus far, uh, Red Like Roses and the Mirror Mirror anthologies have actually been out in the wild for purchase for a while, with the From Shadows anthology joining the recent localized roster. Each manga anthology is currently available in both physical and digital format for $12.99 and $8.99 respectively from a variety of brick and mortar and online retailers. So if you're interested in picking any of them up, you can find the links for that in the description. And for all of you Yang Xiaolong fans out there, you can finally rejoice. The final Ruby official manga anthology titled I Burn featuring the sunny little dragon herself is slated to release on February 19th, 2019 with pre-orders currently available for online retailers in the description. So basically by the time Ruby volume six wraps up in January, you'll be able to look forward to some more Ruby content with this last anthology coming out in February. So if you're looking to secure the final copy or potentially have the entire anthology set, uh, pre-order links and uh, you know purchase links will be found in the description but as per usual with my previous installments I'm going to be focusing and breaking down a variety of aspects that can be found in the official manga anthology for from shadows in this video so I hope you guys enjoy the video as always be sure to leave any of your comments or feedback in the comment section and without further ado let us begin so this manga anthology is titled from shadows and similar to the red like roses and mirror mirror anthology it predominantly focuses on the third member of team Ruby being Blake Belladonna during her time spent at Beacon Academy Academy, but with an interesting twist. So the events of this anthology are centered around a lot of different aspects of Blake during her time spent at Beacon, with a vast majority of it taking place during the event of Ruby Volume 3. The Vital Festival tournament is currently underway, there is an array of characters that were featured from that volume, and certain aspects before and after the events that are flushed out and better exposed uh, during that time. And with the events of this anthology taking place during Volume 3, we already know at this point a great deal about Blake's past. We learned from Volume 1 her affiliation with the White Fang. I was once a member of the White Fang. That's right. I was a member for most of my life, actually. You could almost say I was born into it. And I was there. I was at the front of every rally. I took part in every boycott. We witnessed during Volume 2 her struggles with learning to rely on her friends and teammates instead of dealing with everything on her own. Blake, we're worried about you. This investigation is starting to mess with your head. You can't sleep, you hardly eat, and to be honest, your grades have been suffering. Blake, you won't be able to find anything if you can't even keep your eyes open. Just please, get some rest. Not just for you, but for the people you care about. So with everything that we learned of her during volume one and two, you're probably wondering, well, what can this anthology offer us as an experience for flushing out or something that's worthwhile? Well, it kind of ties into what I mentioned with Blake during volume two, but with better context and expression. We know Blake used to be a freedom fighter during her time spent in the White Fang. It was something that she was born into, as she mentioned, with her mother and father that we learned during volume four, all the while carrying the shame of being a faunus and being discriminated by humans. You want to know why I despise the White Fang? It's because they're a bunch of liars, thieves, and murderers. Well, maybe we were just tired of being pushed around. And from the beginning of the series, since volume one, we've seen Blake have a relatively easy transition into her life at Beacon Academy as she warmed up to her friends and grew to be a huntress. But what I think this anthology does so well, and again, something that is very similar to the Red Like Roses and the Mirror Mirror anthology, it's what we don't see on the surface. And if I had to boil down 168 pages into a summary of what you can expect from this anthology, the best way that I can put it, it witnesses, it expresses, it compares and contrasts 
the effects of Blake's life as a freedom fighter, her entire life in the White Fang, being subjugated, being discriminated, being hated on, being, you know, targeted by humans, being on a life of running, to all of a sudden being surrounded by positivity, developing meaningful relationship with her peers, making friends, and seeing how her life has ultimately transitioned from a freedom fighter to a huntress in training at Beacon and seeing the comparing contrast of those two drastically different lifestyles. And I don't just mean this from a mental or emotional standpoint, but there are even elements and aspects of Blake's character that are expressed in the show that only are better highlighted for this anthology and for the overall message of it that we end up seeing. Now, I'll be the first one to say this, but I'm pretty sure we all think we know who Blake is at this point. I did not ask for this. These are unauthorized snuggles. And those moments are all fun and dandy, but I think as you read and as you understand and contextualize a lot of what we see from the volume to a lot of what we're learning and reading about in the anthology you get to have this better understanding of the mental leaps the emotional leaps that blake has gone to to have a, a normal life you know going from again a freedom fighter someone who's a part of a terrorist organization at times uh to you know to kind of just having a, a meaningful peaceful life where she doesn't have to feel like she's always on the run and she always has to be scared and her personality more than anything is very telling of this throughout the show you know we've gotten the grumpy cat we've gotten the selfish cat we've gotten the scaredy cat and in hindsight a lot of those are just really funny tongue-in-cheek moments because blake is a cat faunus but under the surface a lot of those moments only add to reinforce her transition from a life on the run to a life of letting her guard down letting people in and that's always been the hardest thing for Blake to kind of do. So like I said, this is a really interesting twist from the manga's perspective because I think it's very easy to lose sight of what we watch in the show. And again, try to contextualize a lot of what Blake's past has been to her present. But I think the anthology drives this theme home more than anything. So similar to Ruby and Weiss in their respective anthologies, I think a great deal of credit is owed to the supporting cast of characters that you see in the anthology especially since this takes place during the vital festival tournament and a lot of these faces we've come to really miss and not being able to see over the last couple of years and these characters really do a lot in helping blake open up and adjust to her new life at beacon now with this anthology in particular there is a lot of characters especially since this takes place like i said during the vital festival tournament there's a lot of characters that we haven't seen in a really long time um, but for my take and for my impressions, I'm going to be focusing on the three characters who I think had the most impact on Blake's um, transition throughout and the most impact on her development in this read overall. So if any of you guys plan on picking it up, just know that there are a lot of returning faces that I think a lot of you guys are going to really enjoy. So first and foremost is a character that I don't think anybody, myself included, was expecting to see. It was a really great treat to see this character return. Uh, especially in the From Shadows anthology, since this person hasn't really interacted all that much with Blake in the show, but it was definitely a treat to have... Yeah, Neon Cat. So since, like I said, a huge portion of this anthology takes place during the Vital Festival Tournament of Volume 3, we're treated to a bunch of returning characters that we got to see during that time. Neon Cat and Flint Cole of Team Funky, Team Coffee, Team Arburn, all of them were sprinkled throughout the anthology. It was a real, like I said, a great treat to see because we haven't really got to see a lot of these characters, you know, in the show since volume three, you know, going into volume four and five and where we are with six. But on the topic of this character, Neon Cat being a Faunus from Atlas, a kingdom that doesn't really take too kindly to the Faunus kind, had an amazing impact on Blake in the first chapter of this anthology that i was blown away to see and honestly i think it was something that she really needed you know much like her interactions with weiss and and yang during their matchup in the vital festival tournament she comes off as very abrasive she comes off as just telling it like it is not sugarcoating anything and it might come off as offensive to some people and you know blake included but i think she has this demeanor of tough love and hard truths because she does inevitably care and again i thought it was a great read to kind of just see neon talking to another faunus of her kind and being like hey i don't let it get to me you know i just skip to the beat i stay happy i stay funky and i don't let anything get to me and i think that was a really big point of contention for her to be like okay i'm struggling a little bit but you know if neon is able to kind of live her life and be happy and be fun in a place that aren't really kind to faunus overall then i think you know me being at Beacon can kind of help me reflect on a lot of things that I've been dealing with and rely on my team and rely on my friends like like Neon does with Flint more than anything. So I absolutely loved the interactions. I loved the compare and contrast to Neon's life, to Blake's. 
and I, I just thought it was really fun to kind of see and get more depth from, from Neon than anything else. It was amazing! Now at this point, whether it's the event of the anthology itself up to Volume 3, or even in the show proper with Volume 6, I'm pretty sure we're all very much aware of the dynamic of Blake and Adam. The Belladonna Girl. I will make it my mission to destroy everything you love. Thank you, Blake. It's good to know I've still got you. And while Adam was never physically present during Blake's time at Beacon, he always lived among her. He was always in her mind. She was always thinking about him and kind of lived with that fear, almost as PTSD of always knowing Adam's tyranny, always knowing Adam's influence and his danger. And the White Fang as well, and, and wanting to put everything and harbor everything on her shoulders so she didn't get her friends hurt. You know, what ended up happening to Yang, she still blames herself to this day in volume six. So it's very easy to kind of see the the, the mental and the, and the emotional uh, strain that Blake has dealt with and something that she kind of keeps to herself because she is very moody and she is very you know kind of quote unquote emo from from time to time but it's just because she has a lot of those things on her mind and Adam is a big big part of that now for the sake of this anthology I don't want to give too much away on the dynamic of Adam and the White Fang and how that plays a role in Blake's development but in terms of the mental effects that it's had on Blake witnessing her mental struggles her internal struggles and also at the same time having friends to rely on to cope with and to console her, it's a great change of pace from what we've seen of Blake in the show so far. So again, if you're a Blake fan, I feel like this is the biggest aspect of the anthology that kind of drives the point home of expressing Blake's mental and emotional struggles. And the last character on the roster, this is no surprise at this point for anyone who's reading the anthology or even who's just watching this video, but you can't talk about Blake Belladonna. You cannot talk about her growth. You cannot talk about her time at Beacon or anything without mentioning her teammate. Your Yang Xiao Long, my sunny little dragon. So the first chapter opens up with Blake and Yang riding on Bumblebee and the, the, the bike Bumblebee. I'm not, not talking about the ship here. You know, like I said, Blake is the type of person who's always been on the run, has always been scared, has never been able to let her guard down and has always been someone who felt like the struggle was always on her, the fight was always on her, and it was her burden to bear, and nobody else could be a part of it. Now take that timid personality and blend that with someone who is strong, who is confident, who's warm, who's compassionate, who's caring, um, you know, who burns brighter than everyone else and makes everyone feel welcome and makes everyone feel safe and is a representation of strength in Blake's eyes. And, and Yang, in, in many ways, is the respite that Blake looks for, someone that makes her feel welcome, who makes her feel not like, you know, an alien or, or an outcast just because she's a faunus. And a lot of those moments shine very bright. Uh, no pun intended for Yang, despite this being a From Shadows anthology, but it's it's really sweet and it's really great to see. And if you're a Blake fan, you'll love it. If you're a Yang fan, you'll love, you'll love it. And if you're a Bumblebee fan, you know, the, the, there are aspects there that I think a lot of people will enjoy regardless if it's for the ship's sake or if it's for the dynamic of them as friends or as teammates or whatever the case might be. And I'll, and I'll leave off at this last thing too, because I don't want to give too much away for people who want to read this for themselves, but... Blake deals really hard with people running out of her life, you know, her mother running out on her, Blake running out on her at the end of volume three, and then we also have Blake who has a habit of running away from her problems, you know, and by proxy, the people in her life who care about her. So that dynamic of comparing and contrasting Yang dealing with people running out of her life and Blake running away from said people, um, that I think also is going to be a really good strengthening factor for Blake and Yang down the road, you know, with the show and everything else, but it's heavily expressed in this anthology. And I think it's, I think it's something that a lot of people are going to enjoy, but all in all, out of all of the anthologies, Red Like Roses, Mirror Mirror and From Shadow, I'd have to say that this one surprised me the most for a few reasons. Number one, seeing and hearing Neon Cat was such a surprise. I read that and I was like, oh my god we need to see this cat again i'm so glad we're going to atlas you know into volume six and hopefully by volume seven we'll be there i need to see neon again she did she she made such an impact on blake and seeing that reading that in the first chapter i was so happy to see more than seeing team arbor and more than seeing team coffee neon cat in this anthology was such a treat and i was so happy to see her but i'd say the biggest point to take away from this anthology that goes beyond ruby that goes beyond this anthology that goes Beyond something that I feel like is a lot more grounded and a lot more people can understand in, in today's life more than anything is the aspects of mental illness and mental health. And 
the fact that they took this concept that is is you know some people are still making strides to kind of understand and detect and to kind of resolve and make things a little bit easier for people who deal with mental illness and i think it's really important to talk to people to be open and that's something that blake has always dealt with she's always dealt with being a shut-in for being ostracized for being very uh you know reserved and and docile for a lot of the things that she's been through and I would say personally, uh, you know, Blake as a character for me is someone that I've always resonated with because I sympathize with her a lot, you know, and, and I, I'm always happy to see when she does make it through with Sun or with or with Yang or, you know, someone coming into her life and, and helping her through those tough times because I resonate with that a lot. You know, I, I see that everyone has demons, everybody has their dark moments and you need light, you need people, you need positivity around you to get through that or you're just gonna slowly slowly you know deteriorate from from all of the, the the you know from all the trauma from all of the stress and everything like that so blake more than anything being equipped with 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 dealing with mental illness with dealing with these mental and emotional struggles but having that fallback having yang having weiss having ruby having sun and the best thing to take away from this read more than anything is there's nothing wrong with asking for help, especially if you're trying to better yourself. But if you're a fan of Blake, uh, I think you're gonna really love this read. If you are a fan of Adam, you're probably gonna love the fact that he's featured here and there. If you don't like Adam, uh, you're gonna definitely hate him for the purpose that he serves for Blake's mental health. But it was a great read, I loved it, and it reinforces a lot of what we already know about Blake and gives us a side of her that, again, like Weiss and like Ruby, we didn't get to see in the show, so I think, it has something really great to offer people and you know with all that said i think those are all of my general thoughts uh, opinions and impressions on the anthology overall um if you guys are planning on looking to pick up a copy of the official uh, from shadows anthology yourself or if you already have a copy let me know what you guys think about it did you guys like it are you guys going to check it out for yourselves everything else like that in the comment section and this goes without saying too but a huge thank you to everyone over at viz uh for deciding uh to continue supporting me and deciding to partner with me to allow me to share my thoughts my impressions my opinions my love my passion for ruby for the anthology uh with my community i really do appreciate the fact that you guys even love these and hopefully these are able to help you guys out with with sharing more of the information of this with the community at large and last but certainly not least of course my community the people who subscribe to me who like my videos, who leave incredible words of encouragement, incredible feedback, and who are the ones that allow me to be able to do stuff like this, uh, you know, every single day. So thank you guys so much for, for watching the content, for enjoying it, for believing in me more than anything. And uh, hopefully this video makes all of you guys proud. But with all of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys picked up the anthology, I hope you guys enjoyed the read. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you once again to Viz for, you know, making this video possible, for allowing to partner with me and allowing me again to share my thoughts. And thank you so much to the fans for the support and, you know, allowing me to be able to do this every day. I absolutely love this anthology. I really hope I can come back for the last one for you guys. I hope you guys are all enjoying Volume 6 as well. Uh, but with all of that said, um, those are all of my thoughts. Uh, like I said, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll be replying to comments overall and just kind of see how people feel about the anthology. Because this was a really good read. I, I really, really liked it. Um, but with all of that said, thank you guys so much for your support. I really enjoyed it, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Take care.